We shall escape the absurdity of growing a whole chicken in order to eat a breast or wing by growing these parts separately under a suitable medium. In this episode, the total destruction of Earth may be saved by an unlikely hero, Schmeat, or Frankenmeat, whichever you prefer. In case you haven't noticed, global warming is quickly becoming the largest threat to humanity. With droughts and floods challenging food security, glaciers no longer supplying as much water, and diminishing resources igniting conflict across the globe, even the Pentagon admits that climate change is a security risk. Plus, when 97% of scientists actually agree on something, it should be taken seriously. What isn't being taken seriously, however, is the impact of animal agriculture on global warming and our overall food security. In terms of global warming's main driving factor, greenhouse gases, the FAO says that livestock is responsible for 18% of the world's greenhouse gases, while other sources say up to 51%. Yeah, that seems high, but the reason they may be higher than previously estimated is that livestock produces a lot of greenhouse gases other than CO2. For example, they produce as much methane as all of our natural gas combined, and methane is 86 times more potent than CO2. They also produce about 65% of the world's nitrous oxide, which is 300 times as potent as CO2. As for the lungs of the Earth, the Amazon, 91% of Amazon destruction is driven by livestock. Still questioning those greenhouse gas statistics? How many cows can there actually be after all? When you consider that 45% of the Earth's land surface is dedicated to raising livestock, that 51% figure starts to make a bit more sense. The worst part is, is that emissions from agriculture are estimated to increase by 80% over the next 35 years. But enough about greenhouse gases. Water is also a huge issue, and contaminated water kills more people than all wars combined. And global warming is most dangerous in how it affects our water supply, because it destroys glaciers and redistributes water to create more floods and droughts. And growing feed for livestock hogs 56% of the water in the US. In the end, it takes about an average of 2,500 gallons to produce one pound of beef. You might as well shower for three months straight, day in and day out. You may realize that animal agriculture is the greatest threat to humanity. The whole world could theoretically go vegan and stop animal agriculture entirely, but most people still eat animal products three times a day and show no intention of changing their ways and often express it in the most annoying ways possible. Worst of all, worldwide meat consumption is growing. Could there be a way to stop animal agriculture altogether while still allowing people to eat as much meat as they want? We don't want to give up heart disease quite yet. The answer is, as you may have guessed, lab-grown meat. I know what you're thinking. Doesn't a lab-grown hamburger cost $325,000? That's what I last heard. Well, it did. But the first iPhone cost $150 million to make and lab burgers could soon cost as little as 12 bucks. And the research estimates that in a couple decades, it could be commercially viable. But how does it work? It takes stem cells that repair muscle tissue from a cow's neck and put them in containers along with fetal calf serum, which is pretty gross, but apparently someday won't be an animal source. The cells are then placed in a gel on a petri dish where the calf serum nutrients are reduced, triggering cells to go into a starvation mode and split into muscle cells. Those cells eventually merge into full muscle fibers. Oh yeah, in case you didn't know, people eat animal muscles. Yeah, that's disgusting, but so is slaughtering and eating animals. Nothing new there. You may be thinking, most people would never accept lab-grown meat on their plate. Thankfully, if there's anything that people are good at, it's ignoring the true source of their food. For that, our track record is magnificent. GMOs were an unprecedented freak of nature, but people didn't question it when scorpion DNA was added to their tomatoes. Most people still buy milk with copious amounts of added hormones and carcinogens. Lab-grown meat will still be a hamburger, a juicy, cholesterol-filled hamburger. That also has cow DNA. If it looks like a hamburger in the store and it's a dollar cheaper, people will buy it. Even the first ever taste of Schmeat was described with, the consistency is perfect. This is meat to me. In the words of one random internet commenter, I think it'll sell. No gristle is a massive upside. Let's look at the environmental benefits of lab-grown meat. Quote, for perspective, half a swimming pool would allow us to feed about 20,000 people. 
Remember how livestock uses 45% of the Earth's land mass? If we grew lab meat, we could reduce that by 10 to 20 times. We would only be using 2 to 5% of the Earth's land mass to grow lab meat, and we could use the remaining 40% of freed up land to reallocate it to prairie, restore it to its natural condition, re anything. We could do anything. Now, for the most hopeful chart that I've seen in a while, the greenhouse gas emissions comparing lab meat to other meats, and yes, it's tiny. Schmeat to the rescue of planet Earth. Thank you for watching.